Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a year-end list here. Once more in 2019, this time we're going over death metal releases of 2019. I still don't have a phone with data on it, so I can't upload any real videos. I thought I got a new phone, but I ended up just giving it to my mom, and I kept the old phone, but there's no memory left on the old phone, if that makes any sense. So I have to do a live stream, otherwise I can't do a video. So bear with me, I can't even get the fucking camera to stay in landscape mode. So I apologize to begin with, but hello, if you're tuning in right now, thank you. I apologize for not having this set up properly, but we have a lot of shit to go over and might have to take a couple little breaks just to switch sides on the cassette deck, but we're going to blast the American version of Desolate Endscape by Frenolith. I love this album and I can't wait what's in store in 2020 for Frenolith. I really hope they have a new full length coming out, but... You never know, but my fingers are crossed. This 2017 release is just still in heavy, heavy rotation. But let's start with cassettes, because this shit's just gnarly. There's a lot of stuff to go over right now. But we'll start with Blue Holocaust, Flesh for the Cannibal God, Total Impedigo, Early Carcass Worship, if you're a fan of, like, gore grind, bulldozing, gore metal, you can't go wrong here. I know this isn't straight up death metal, but it deserves to be pretty much thrown in that category, in my opinion, because this really, really sounds like Impedigo at parts, and especially, like, my favorite error of Carcass. And it's great. Like, seriously, I love Blue Holocaust, and, like, their discography is fucking sick. But Flesh for the Cannibal God, yo, this is so good. This is one of those releases that it came late in the year, and I'm just in absolute love with it. Flesh for the Cannibal God by Blue Holocaust. So fucking sick. On Head Split Records. Each one of the song titles spells out the album title. So, like, track one is, like, Frenzied, Frenzied Chief Ravages, I think it says. I don't know. I can't really read it. Oh, here we go. Frenzied Machete Ravages. And then the next track is Left to Fester, then Eaten Raw. It all spells out. Flesh for the Cannibal Gods. Very, very fucking cool. And the artwork here is great. I actually wanted to get the LP of this, but it sold out. But just super sick artwork. The cosmetics are great. It sounds great. The vocals are just so disgusting. I love it. So, if you're a fan of bulldozing gore grind... Definitely check this out. It just has a lot of impedigo, you know, worship to it. So I'm throwing this in the death metal category. Blue Holocaust, Flesh for the Cannibal God. Next up, this is a beast and one of my favorite releases of 2019. And that is Cathonica. Typomantia, Sacred Triarchy of Spiritual Putrefaction. Caligari Records did the cassette. Sentient Ruin did the double LP version of this beast. Holy fuck. This is like incantation, but super, super chaotic, noisy, and just awesome. This is so fucking vicious, and these Venezuelans absolutely made something special here on Typomantia, Sacred Triarchy of Spiritual Putrefaction. Side A is split up into three separate acts, which 
pretty much go over the actual acts of sacred spiritual putrefaction. But on the other side, you have the remaining tracks. And it's just... Wow. This is one of those releases that I was legit at a loss of words when I first heard it. Because it starts off like some chaotic Black Death release. But then... You start realizing, it's like, yo, this guy sounds like, you know, this is some early incantation shit. And it just goes more and more down that rabbit hole while just pummeling you with atmosphere, insane riffs, and just, it's fucking sick. Like, I cannot recommend this enough to anyone watching this video that loves extreme music. Cathonica. Typomantia, Sacred Triarchy of Spiritual Putrefactions, one of those releases, like, seriously. Imagine incantation on tons of acid, stuck in a whirlwind of fucking riffs. This is so goddamn good, definitely one of my favorite releases of the year. Cathonica, Typomantia, Sacred Triarchy of Spiritual Putrefaction. Caligari Records and Sentient Ruin. So fucking good. Like, seriously, I can't get over how sick this release is. Again, great tape cosmetics courtesy of Caligari. Nice slip. And the cover art to begin with is just bad ass. But super, super cool stuff. And when it comes to like kind of those Lovecraftian words, like I don't really know how to say Cathonica, because it could be Katonica. It all depends on how you say your Lovecraftian words. Like Cathonic Deity, you could you could call it like Catonic deity, I don't really know because even according to H.P. Lovecraft, there's no proper way to say these words because it's a ancient alien dead language. So, chill if you know you're like, you're saying that wrong. Technically, there's not really a proper way to say it because it's kind of based off of a Lovecraftian theme. But Here's just me being a fuck-up when it comes to words. Hailing from the land down under, we have the debut from Carcinoid, Metastatic, Declination. Holy fuck. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the best examples of this new wave of old-school death metal. Head Split Records and Blood Harvest handled this release. I really need to get the LP on Blood Harvest, but again, gorgeous tape cosmetics courtesy of Head Split. But Carcinoid is some straight up death metal by fans of death metal for all you death metal maniacs out there. I was listening to. Um, their one live song from that Akuza Death Fest, and they sound great live. Holy fuck. Seriously, if you've never heard Carcinoid, check out their 2018 demo on Caligari, and check out the full length on Head Split and Blood Harvest Records. It's Metastatic Declination. So, M-E-T-A-S-T-A-T-I-C-D-E-C-L-I-N-A-T-I-O-N. But super sick shit from the land down under. I love this band, I love the artwork, and I love the fucking tunes. Awesome vocals, awesome riffing. Just killer stuff from Carcinoid. These guys are a pretty much a staple when it comes to the Australian underground. And I think it's great because they fucking deserve it. And I'm pretty sure these guys are in other bands from like 
the Australian scene. I'm not sure if anyone's in like Vile Apparition, Gutless, or anything like that, but they might be. I'm just not 100% sure, but Carcinoid, Metastatic, Declination, so fucking good. Next up, thanks to Dylan, a head split. This is such a killer fucking release right here. Necro Drunks, Terminal Perversion. Killer, killer, toilet death. This is some filthy, filthy death metal for all you sickos out there. I fucking love Terminal Perversion. You have side terminal and you have side perversion. Again, great tape cosmetics courtesy of Head Split. But this is just sickening shit. Like, I, I love it. 15 tracks of utter filth. <laughs> sick, sick shit. And great artwork as well. Charlie did a great job here with the recording and whatnot at Underworld Studios. The cover art on the CD version and the poster's a lot bigger. The poster's actually behind me. But, uh, yeah, I really fucking love this right here. I think that's so goddamn cool. But, yeah, this is such a fucking killer release right here. Like, Into Eternal Queef, <laughs> Peep Show Massacre, Ejaculating Maggots, like, Radically Inseminated with Cogulated Cum, Totally Disgusting Death Metal from... The Necro Drunks, Terminal Perversion, Punked Out Death Metal, I should say, and it's killer, killer shit. I love the Necro Drunks, but I really feel this is probably their strongest recording, and I fucking love it. Definitely check that out. Next up, hails to NVNM Productions, Respect New Jersey, or Prepare for Combat. We have Blasphematory, Depths of the Obscurity. This is already sold out on cassette, but Nuclear Winter is handling the CD and LP. Now, hopefully, a U.S. distro picks that up, because otherwise, you have to order this from Greece. And probably pay about $20 extra shipping. But trust me, it's fucking worth it. Blasphematory is one of my favorite NVNM bands. And this is a full length with the same name as the demo. So do not get this confused with this. They're both great. They both have the same name. But there's your big difference. Dan Fried did the layout for the full-length version of Depths of the Obscurity. While the demo is very DIY-esque and whatnot, and still very, very sick shit. But the full-length here, oh my goodness. This sounds like Gourmet on steroids. Seriously, so fucking good. Blasphematory, Depths of the Obscurity. Recorded in the summer of 2019 by Joe Aversnio. And you have Chris Warhead on drums and keyboards with Joe Aversnio on guitar, bass, and vocals. This is so fucking sick. Definitely check it out digitally. And until it's time to grab the LP or if they do a reissue of the cassette, I cannot recommend Depths of the Obscurity enough. This is definitely one of the best death metal releases that you might have never heard of that came out in 2019. It was a late release, but so fucking good. NVNM Productions. Fuck. Yes, this is also going to be available on Nuclear Winter Productions. <laughs> Dude, tell me about it. Uh, Chaos Records actually gave me a refund. Oh, fucking... Um, what's it called? 
not getting the impure Satan's Eclipse LP from the label. The band is hooking it up, which is amazing. They didn't need to do that, but the label fucked me and my buddy over, so I'm glad, you know, there's people out there that still care about customer service. Like, this is a release that was meant to drop in fucking July. July 5th. I have the cassette release, but that's for a different day. But hopefully the LP gets here in time. But in the meantime, get into some blasphematory depths of the obscurity and bang your fucking head. I forget if this is the end of the A side here, so I'm going to slip on the B side real quick. Frenolith, Desolate Endscape, this is the American head split version. I actually got some money and made a order to Extremely Rotten Productions yesterday and got some sick shit. Got the Ulcerot tape. Got, oh, I got some sick shit coming in. But the B-side of Desolate Endscape is now on. So let's enjoy some Frenolith and some more NVNM goodness. Right here, I have to apologize because I know a lot of you maniacs do not have a copy of this and can't hear it yet. Altar of Gore, Obscure, and Obscene Gods. Number 11 out of 25. I snagged this at their first show ever opening for fucking Fetid and Cerebral Rot. And almost stealing the show until Cerebral Rot crushed the venue. But let me read you what little bit of information I have about this fucking amazing, amazing full length. Not sure if demo reissues are still available on the NVNM site. This was limited to 25. I also got this at the um, Fetid and Cerebral Rot show at uh, St. Vitus. The Altar of Gore demo is kind of notoriously awesome so the full length here just completely turns that dial up to 11 like this sounds like fucking titan blood but from new jersey i can't get over how fucking good obscure and obscene gods are it's absolutely just one of the best releases of 2019 that I really hope more than 25 people got to hear. Like seriously, at the end of this Frenolith tape, I'll throw this on in the background because it's so fucking good. And this is an advanced copy. I'll, like as you can see, this is, you know... It's a promo, but it sounds great. Like, seriously, the production's great on here. But, uh, this is an advanced copy of Altar of Gore's debut album, Obscure and Obscene Gods, to be released by NVNM in late 2019. Contact NVNMPROD at gmail.com. So, just go to the NVNM Bandcamp and send them an email about this if you have any questions because I'm curious as well as to when this is going to be officially released because it's so fucking good seriously like if you're a fan of Titan Blood and like a lot of the other NVNM bands especially Blasphematory even like I could just you know I got those vibes, but at the same time, this is just super, super savage, and I love every single second of it. Like Flies to the Summon of Rot is the intro track at 53 seconds, and then you have like Exalted, Sangaration, 6 minutes and 1 seconds, Altar of Gore, 6 minutes and 2 seconds, Blackstone Urn, 5 minutes and 38 seconds. 
accolade of the foul ones, six minutes and one seconds. Sanguary Relics, five minutes and 36 seconds. And the title track, Obscure and Obscene Gods, at seven minutes and 18 seconds of crushing death. So fucking good. Altar of Gore, Obscure and Obscene Gods on NVNM Productions. Again, you have to hit up NVNM about this. Because I'm in the same boat. I'm waiting for, you know, that to get a proper release and whatnot. But in the meantime, I'm just loving it. But this next one is a pretty sick full length. And it's a lot different than a lot of the other releases I'm going to be going over. And that is Inoculation. Pure Cosmic Dread. Now, if you're a fan of cosmic death metal, like Artificial Brain, Blood Incantation, Time Ghoul, Nucleus, Vector, etc., 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 you'll find something to love conceptually about Inoculation, but musically, this is kind of one of those bands that doesn't really sound like anyone else. Like, they have a different style of vocal patterns than a lot of the other bands on Maggot Stomp. They kind of use the good cop, bad cop vocal patterns, which usually is a huge fucking turnoff for me. But the way that Nick and company, like, Anthony, Nick, and Charles, first off, seeing this band live really, really won me over. Because... Seriously, they're up there with, like, blood incantation when it comes to their fucking musicianship. These three gentlemen have some heavy-duty musical talent. Like, from harmonizing guitar solos, like, the drumming is fucking insane. Like, I'm talking Derek Roddy level insane, but, like, it's just a badass release. And the Adam Burke artwork is absolutely gorgeous. Pure cosmic dread. And this isn't, you know, like as crushing as all the other Maggot Stomp releases, but it's just a fucking sick listen. And it's very enjoyable and just a fucking fun death metal release like it really brought me back to like 2005 but in a good way inoculation pure cosmic dread on maggot stomp awesome awesome release right here i just i really fucking like it especially uh purity the silencers eye of providence is badass pockets of devastation badass Check this out first, and then I have a feeling a lot of you are going to like this, but their new 7-inch, I feel, is a lot stronger, anatomized, but Pure Cosmic Dread is pretty badass, and I have a feeling you're going to enjoy this. But in a year when you had a new Nocturnus record, a new Nucleus, a new Blood Incantation... I actually picked this over Nucleus just because I felt this stood out a little bit different. Whereas, don't get me wrong, Nucleus is going to make a different list, but Inoculation, Pure Cosmic Dread. And the final cassette, fucking Lord Gore, Scapples for Blind Surgeons. Oh yeah, if you love Death Grind, you're gonna love the new Lord Gore. Coming off the Cronenberg promo, this is so fucking sick. Everlasting Spew handled the CD and stuff. I don't know who's doing the LP. I take it Everlasting Spew is, but I don't really know. All I know is this sounds absolutely amazing on cassette, and again... Head Split Records, killing it with the tape cosmetics. But like I was saying, the Cronenberg promo was super badass, and 
This is just as good, and it features the tracks that were on the Cronenberg promo, so in case you missed it, you get to hear it again, and it sounds fucking sick. But I do like the promo's production a little bit more, but I like the way this sounds on cassette digitally. It's a little bit too clean, but that extra rumbly speaker, I, I just feel adds a lot to, you know... Gurge, Maniac Neil, Colin Bow, Putrid Pierce, and Jesus H. Dump. If you're a fan of Lord Gore, then you need to check this out. Or if you're a fan of, like, Galvanizer, Cadaveric Incubator, Blue Holocaust, check out Lord Gore. Badass stuff. It's just a lot heavier than a lot of those other bands and a lot more death metal and less grind. So get into Scapples for Blind Surgeons. Head Split Records handled the cassette. Everlasting Spew did the CD, and I'm pretty sure they're doing the LP. But again, I really love the J card. Just like the colors and everything. Everything pops. Looks like some black light poster that would be like in your friend's older brother room in like 1994. But it's fucking sick. I don't know. I really dig it. Especially, like, just those teeth. I don't know. I thought that was, like, a nice little touch. Like, inside there. I uh, can't really see. But, oh well. Lord Gore. Scapples for Blind Surgeons. So fucking good. Great artwork as well. And I love Lord Gore's logo. It does remind me a lot of the Blue Holocaust logo. Like, they're very similar, kind of. Like, well, just the art's similar with the, you know, cannibal shit, the eyeballs for O's and all that. Sick stuff, though. And time for the gnarly, the gnarly stuff, the LPs. I just want to get all that situated. And we're going to put some Altar of Gore on after Frenolith. But, time for some LPs. And until the last three, nothing is in any order. On Dark Descent Records, hailing from Finland, we have the third full length from Crips Cadaver Circulation probably one of the most underrated releases of 2019 I don't know where the fuck the most the majority of people were when it came to talking about how bad ass this slab of death doom metal was from the cover art alone, I knew I was in for something special. And I'm a big Crips fan. Oh, dude, thank you so fucking much, dude. I've been trying to get a hold of you. The Wii actually does not work. But that's... I have to just say thank you for everything else. The Wii works with, like, Kirby's Adventure Link. But... I picked up Mario Brothers Wii, and I'm get is it a European Wii? Because it won't read the disc. I, I don't know what what else to do. I tried everything, and I can't connect to the internet or do anything else. So I did beat Kirby's Adventure, but I, I don't really know what else to do. I can't download games, and I'm gonna have to return uh, Mario Wii, but. Oh well, I everything else though is so fucking gnarly, like, wow. But, I need to get back on topic here. Email me, or DM me please, because I do need to talk to you brother. But, Crips, Cadaver Circulation, I don't think Crips has sounded this good since their demo days, and I just can't get over how fucking sick this release is. I don't know why not many people were talking about it. Like, 
As soon as the opening track, Sinking Transient Waters, kicked in, I knew I was in for a fucking trip. And it was just so fucking good. Every track on here, amazing. Definitely some of the best Crips material they've ever done. And if you're a fan of Death Doom Metal, you have no excuse not to get into this release right here by Crips. Cadaver Circulation, so fucking good. Six tracks of Finnish Death Doom. This could have came out in 1993, and you probably wouldn't know the difference. I have this on just plain black vinyl, and I love the fucking logo and whatnot. Just very, very simple Dark Descent Dragons, and a regular, just nice and clean fucking logo. Badass, and plain black. But if you're a fan of Death Doom Metal, look no further than the new Crips record. So fucking good. Cadaver Circulation. Again, I'm not sure why not many people are talking about this record, but you definitely should be. It's so fucking good. I know it came out a little earlier in the year, but still, awesome stuff. And speaking of awesome, if you play the Greg Wilkinson game on this channel, then get ready because Leather Glove Perpetual Animation on Dawn Breed and Sentient Ruin. Fuck yes. To me, this is what the new Vastum record should have sounded like. And I like the new Vastum, but I like the new Leather Glove a lot more. This is so fucking good. Coming off an amazing demo, I was kind of curious as to what the full length was going to sound like. First off, very, very gorgeous cosmetics. I love the artwork. The poster's hanging up over there. But Greg Wilkinson and company, like, there's so many guests on this release. It's amazing. We have Greg Wilkinson on bass, guitars, vocals, and noise. Dustin Ferris, Chad Gailey, Sean McGrath, Shelby Larmo, Eric Cutler, Danny Corrales, and, uh, yeah, th th that's it on this release. But, holy shit. If you know who some of those individuals are, then you already know this right here is so fucking good. When you have members of Autopsy, Necrot, and fucking Greg Wilkinson from Brain Oil. Wow. Leather Glove Perpetual Animation is heavy, fucking weird, and just awesome. Again, I really love how these, like, the blood pops and these illustrations and stuff. And the actual LP cosmetics are sick. 45 RPMs of madness. Definitely one of the best releases of the year. If you're a fan of death metal, if you haven't heard this yet... Seriously, you need to hear Leather Glove Perpetual Animation. The Sand Slips, A Cursed Roll, Perpetual Animation, Embrace These Grim Decisions, A Visceral Notion of Death, Last Moments of Fortification, The Resurrectionist, and Reflections of Despair make up this bad boy. And again, I can't get over how fucking heavy, good, weird, and just awesome this sounds. Hopefully Greg does more with this project. I understand how busy he must be with every band he's in and every project and everything he's recording. But I'll read you the hype sticker real quick after I throw on the new Altar of Gore. So you can hear a little bit of this bad boy. Because I feel like I've been talking about it for a couple months now. And have really yet to be able to play it for you guys. 
I think I might have thrown it on like a live stream before, but hopefully I can figure this out and make some, you know, room on my phone so we can do regular fucking videos again. I really do apologize about these live streams because I feel like they're just shit shows of me just fucking stumbling through all this. But we're going to be blasting Altar of Gore, Obscure and Obscene Gods on NVNM Productions. This is an advanced copy, so remember that. But this is going to fucking seriously... Wait until you hear this yourselves. It might be on YouTube, I don't know. Just turning it down a little bit. But, leather glove. I was going to read the hype sticker. The debut LP, 30 minutes of experimental and deviant death doom destruction. Masterminded by Greg Wilkinson. Take a shot, folks. Of Earhammer Studios of Oakland, California, featuring contributions by members of Ghoul, Impaled, Necrot, Engorged, Autopsy, Vastum, and more. Yeah. Leather Glove Perpetual Animation on Dawn Breed and Sentient Ruin. Get into this. Especially if you're a fan of like Asphalix or Vastum. Fuck yeah. Next up on the cosmic death metal side of things, I am so impressed with the new Nucleus release entity. First off, look at that artwork. Yes, it's very vector esh. Vector-ish is what I meant to say, but it doesn't fucking matter because this is so fucking good. MSUO and Unspeakable Axe Records killed it here. Again, cosmetically, from the glossy cover and everything, look at this shit. absolutely gorgeous and this is just some amazing demi ghoul worship but nucleus sound like nucleus on here like after sentient you could tell what band you're listening to if you were a fan of sentient like i really really love entity this held me over for hidden history of the human race like along with paradox by nocturnus ad and this is on this sick fucking color, like, really gnarly colorway, and again, super sick stickers and whatnot. Especially this one with the track listing. Gorgeous stuff, like, but the music on here is awesome. If you're a fan of Sentient, this is a lot heavier than Sentient, I feel, and a lot more focused but at the same time it does sound a lot like time ghoul but it also sounds like fucking nucleus and that's what matters i can't wait to see them with kathilist and fucking rip a in a couple months tickets are secured but Dave is such a fucking good guitar player as well as a vocalist. Like, I really love his style and whatnot. And same with, like, Dan. He has amazing vocals and amazing guitar playing skills. Ryan Reynolds on bass. Pat O'Hara on drums. Just killer, killer stuff from uh, Chicago, Illinois. And more Adam Burke cover art. Adam just killed it this year. He did so many good album covers. Sick shit. Crip Rot. Crip Rot's been on hiatus for a while. You mean Crip Sermon? Because Crip Rot 
is on hiatus. I know that for a fact. But yeah, Nucleus Entity, if you're a fan of outer space influenced death metal, you need to get into this. Ah, see, I get confused. I thought you said Crypt Rot. I was like, oh, Crypt Rot's on hiatus, which is a bummer because I love Crypt Rot. But Coffin Rot did not make my year end list. I apologize. I just. It was good. Like, don't get me wrong, it was a good album. But, like. I don't know. I, I haven't really gone out of my way and listened to it that much. But I like it. Like, don't get me wrong, I do like it. I just haven't really gone out of my way to listen to it more than I have since I've reviewed it. But next up, this was an early one, and the hype was real, but, like, I really love this release, not only for this band's dedication. They now are a trio, they have a bass player, but... Incoffinized Chambers of Deprivation on Maggot Stomp. To me, this is the band besides Grave Ascension that kind of got Maggot Stomp, you know, off the map and kind of off the path of making pins and just kind of, you know, bringing physical death metal media to the masses, obviously, because I know I missed the fucking Pornographic Seizures LP on Christmas Day, along with everyone else I fucking know. But right here, this is some killer... It kind of sounds at times like the drums. They're mixed along the lines of, like, early devourment, but with Demi-Lick-ish vocals. So imagine if Demi-Lick knew about slamming death metal and kind of threw it together in a parking lot. That's what you get with Chambers of Deprivation. Besides awesome fucking artwork and one of the best promo photos ever. <laughs> Father Mullet. But I can't wait to hear what these sickos have up their sleeves for 2020. Max Baxter and Christopher Johnson. This was recorded at Birdcage Studios by Alan Falcon. And um, this was remastered and remixed for vinyl by Dan Randall at Red Lantern Studios, I think. It's actually not credited for some reason on here, but I am 98% positive that Dan remastered this for vinyl and whatnot. Super sick stuff. Great promo photos. And, like I said, imagine if Demi Lick knew about Devourment's drum sound. Like, it's pretty cool. I, I really dig this release. It's quick, it's to the point, it's fucking fun. That's Falcor. Falcor's the dog from the never ending story, unless this is some decrepit form of Falcor. I'm a fucking demon. I don't know what that thing is, but it's awesome. I'm trying to see who did the artwork. Oh, uh, Daniel Avliar. Awesome stuff. But on Maggot Stomp, you'll see this LP pop up every now and again on like MSUO, and sometimes Maggot Stomp has copies. But killer stuff like Rotting Away is such a badass song, Metamorphic, Putrefaction, fuck yeah. Like the tape version of this, I feel is kind of noisy where the LP is a lot louder and just, it's a better mix. Like, digitally, I would honestly recommend this more if you don't have the LP version. I wouldn't go out of my way and grab the cassette unless you're like, uh, you know, completionist or something along those lines. I really, 
I don't, I don't know. The cassette sounds a little bit different than the LP. Not too much different, but this is definitely louder on wax, but super sick death metal. I mean, anytime I'm doing a whole black metal video, man. Trust me, just give me time. Next up's another early bird. And it's another release I don't hear many people talking about at the moment, but that's probably because this came out in, I think, March. And I'm talking about Imprecation Damnato Ad Bestias, Texas Death Metal. This is evil, blasphemous, and fucking heavy as balls. Imagine if Morbid Angel after Covenant had some balls, this is probably what they would have sounded like instead of making domination. Awesome artwork all the way through and through. Here's some Mark Riddick art. Awesome promo photo. Uh, Dustin from Church of Disgust plays lead guitars on Shepherd and the Flock and first lead on Baptized in Satan's Blood. And Anthony Moody does auxiliary vocals on Morbid Crucifixion and Baptized in Satan's Blood. And this is just so fucking savage and I absolutely love it. Temple of the Foul Spirit. Like, it's one of those albums that has you singing along, like, after three listens. And when it comes to death metal, it's kind of hard to find a band besides, like, Cannibal Corpse that is very good when it comes to pronunciation. But Imprecation have their pronunciation dialed the fuck in. Like, a track, um, I'm trying to find it, uh... Baptized in Satan's Blood is probably the most catchy death metal song of the year. Like, as soon as you hear it, you're gonna memorize the chorus, and by the third time you listen to it, I guarantee you know the fucking lyrics. And again, we have amazing artwork and whatnot, and gorgeous cosmetics courtesy of Dark Descent Records. Warhead art up front. And I'm pretty sure Warhead did the back too, but I'm not 100% sure, but I know Warhead did that. Ox Blood Red. Like, it looks like it would be a Black Death release, but it's straight up, this is death metal. Very, very old school sounding death metal from Texas. Blasphemous as fuck. They go after everybody and it's awesome. Highly recommended stuff right here. Every track on this is a fucking banger. I want to get the cassette because I'm sure this sounds sick on tape, but it sounds great on wax. Again, Dark Descent might have LPs available still. And this is totally worth your time, money, everything. It has riffs for days, it's evil as fuck. Get into some imprecation. So fucking good. Next up, we have a 20 buck spin release. Also on Parasitic Records. Cerebral Rot. Odious Descent into Decay. First off, more amazing cover art. And this is the best release 20 bucks spin put out this year. This was the only real death metal release that 20 bucks spin put out that lived up to my expectations. And it's just absolutely so fucking good. They pretty much re-recorded the 7 inch minus the track Cessation of Life. So if you're trying to get, you know, the 7 inch or the demo cassette version of Cessation of Life, I recommend just getting Odious Descent into Decay 
because the only song you're not getting is Cessation of Life, but do what you want to do, I mean, but I love this fucking album. It's so goddamn good, and Cerebral Rot pulled this off live just amazingly. The third best death metal band I saw in 2019. And this is pretty much one of those super groups in the Pacific Northwest when it comes to death metal. Like, you have Kyle, who's also in Fetid. You have Ian Schwab, Zach Nell, Drew O'Brien. Fuck yeah, like... And I love that promo photo, it's so fucking sick. Like, it sums up what this record sounds like. Which was recorded 100% analogly analogly I don't even think that's a fucking word but the recording quality is so goddamn good I love the production super sick fucking cosmetics as well but what really matters on here are the absolutely murky filthy fucking riffs the awesome mix of like kind of almost war metal-ish vocals with just complete sewer soaked death metal vocals. Like with the reverb and everything, it's fucking sick. Like tons of reverb on the vocals, murky as fuck. If you like your death metal slimy and just full of fucking nastiness. Look no further than Cerebral Rot, Odious Descent into Decay. Turn into, it turned into some reeking septic mass with each listen. So fucking good. Primordial Super Radioactive Sewage, Foul Stench of Ruination, Repulsive Infestation of Cadaver, Cerebral Rot, Odious Descent into Decay, Swamped in Ex... Swamped in festering excrementia and reeking septic mass and sardonic repentance. Along with putrefaction, eternal decay, make up this bad boy. And if you're a fan of filthy, heavy as fuck death metal that sounds like it was recorded in a swamp, look no further than Cerebral Rot's debut full length odious descent into decay and check out the band they had before cerebral rot chronic tomb dungeons of dank it's fucking awesome like it really is like it's like getting some more cerebral rot but like a little less serious but this full length is so fucking good definitely one of the best releases of the year next up if you're a fan of death metal, I feel like this is one of those records you had to have fucking fell in love with. Necrofilth Worm Ritual? Hell's Headbangers. Fucking A. Do I really need to talk about Necrofilth? If you like death metal, you already know how fucking good this is. Get Ready to Defile, Dead Brain, Rot with the Dead. Vomit Dog, Repulsed at Birth, Night of the Leech, Cruel Addiction, Feast of the Rats, Feast of the Rats, Gutter Oil, Severed Eyes, They Took My Skin, Unbirthed, Worm Ritual, Poison, and Horror of the Crypt make up the new full length from Necrofilth. Again, gorgeous cosmetics. Hell's Headbangers never fucks around when it comes to this type of stuff. I love this album. Worm Ritual by Necrofilth. Wow. Punky, nasty, filthy, fucking death metal. Awesome stuff right here. And you have Zack Ripper on Chainsaws and Gingivitis. Disgusting Justin. 
on Subsonic Distorted Torment and Shaggy on Vicious Beatings. Fuck yes. Get into the worm ritual that is the new Necrofilth record. I'll read you the hype sticker in a second because this fucking deserves it. And yes, they do. But 300 olive green and black vinyl, 500 black vinyl, and 200 red glow-in-the-dark variants of this are available if you're interested. Hell's Headbangers is actually doing a sale. Six LPs for $50. So I'm pretty sure this is still available. Long-awaited second album from these none more nasty metal punks. Here resides a more real-world evil, pumped, full of punch-in-the-face intensity and more muscularity. Nasty. Awesome stuff right here on Hell's Headbangers from Necrofilth, Worm Ritual. Highly, highly recommended if you're into punky death metal. It's kind of essential listening, I would say. And I'm going to throw the A-side on of Altar of Gore's debut full-length, Obscure and Obscene Gods. I put the B-side on first for some unknown reason and just almost ate total shit right there. But let me make sure this is all lined up right. Okay. Next up. On Expansion Abyss, along with Caligari Records, we have Dippy Gus with Death Ooze. Fuck yeah. Seriously, fuck yeah. I don't know what else to say. This is one of the best, most fun death metal releases of 2019. If you have not heard this yet, yo, you are fucking up slimy, punky, fun as fuck death metal. After their amazing demos on Transylvania tapes, so stoked to be able to fucking have this. Let me grab the tape. Transylvania tapes demo, Long Pig Feast, highly recommended. The cassette version. That's how you know I like something. If I have the cassette as well, fuck yeah. And the original demo I have as well. This is a little harder to find, but the band sent me a copy a while ago. Sick shit. If you're a fan of Dippy Gus, like, yo, try and get this stuff. But... Death Ooze is one of those records. It's just so fucking sick. I, I really love the layout, the music, everything about this. Carissa's vocals are so fucking sick. She has amazing vo- Like, I just love her vocal patterns. They're just fucking disgusting, and I love it. Everything about this release is so goddamn good. Captured by Greg Wilkinson at Earhammer Studios and mastered by Dan Randall at Mammoth Sound. This sounds amazing. It looks amazing. And if you get a chance to see Dippy Gus live or if you grab their split with skulls, that's the only release of theirs I don't have. I need to get that shit. Cannibalism, not extinct. There's all sorts of sick shit like, thrown in here. It's really badass, like... It's something like, dude... The track Deloy's Ape actually has the 911 call where that ape ripped that woman's face off and shit. Yo, it's horrific! Like, she's talking about, like, that she has a gun and stuff and, like... Oh, man, it's gnarly. And the band actually sent me a copy of this randomly. Like, I didn't even know what Expansion Abyss was. I, I, I was like, what's Expansion Abyss? And then I found out it's one of the best distros in the game. Thanks to Dippy Gus Death Ooze. 
Point Pleasant, West Virginia, 1967, opens this bad boy up. Mekong Man Eater, Corpse Flower, and Cyclopia. Then we have Delroy's Ape, Coffin Stain, and Angelus, Killer of the Living, which I think is a Gamera monster. Not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that's a Gamera monster. But this is one of those death metal releases that it's so fucking good. Doesn't really sound like anyone else. And I really, really love the artwork and whatnot. Just super slimy, super sick. Kind of sums up what this bad boy sounds like. Dippy Gus, Death Ooze on Expansion Abyss and Caligari Records. Fucking killer stuff, seriously. Another early release, like, I kind of had this already in my year-end list the moment I listened to it. Alright, we are down to the final four. So, here is another 20 bucks spin release. And we're down to the top four death metal releases of 2019. Oh yeah, I had to throw this on. This is so fucking good. Superstition's debut full length. The Anatomy of Unholy Transformation on 20 bucks spin records. Wow. Coming off of their amazing demo. This is just even more awesomeness. Like fucking A. I was so stoked on how good this album was. From start to finish, this is ripping metal in the style of just fuck yeah. That's all I can say about this is fuck yes. It just rips. Seriously. Riff upon riff upon riff amazing vocals nobody else sounds like this vocally great lyrical content great artwork I wish the poster is on that side but like have a massive poster of this and one of the best death metal bands I saw this year they were so fucking loud and just amazing and as much as I love the demo this just is so fucking good. Give yourself to the, ac the Akron of obscurity to commune with devils and monsters under the radiant shadow. Join the twistings of winged serpents and speak the accursed words of madness. Death, death, death. We call thee, for within you, creation becomes frightened of itself. Gorgeous artwork, killer stuff, superstition, fucking amazing, amazing New Mexican death metal. Again, I just really love how simple that sticker is and everything. Super fucking sick. But the riffs on here, oh yeah. The riffs, the vocals, the drum sound, the production, the creepy keyboard intros. Like I saw Vanum and the one guitar player, uh, he was like fucking around with his sampler and he accidentally played one of the Superstition samples. And like part of me was like, dude, just, just keep playing. Like just so I can see, you know, Superstition again. I know it's a different lineup, but they do share members. Not the entire band, but a few members. But the debut full length from Superstition really, really set the bar high for whatever they have in the future. Because this album right here is something that in 30 years I'll still be listening to and still be fucking enjoying. 
I'm a big superstition fan, and the anatomy of unholy transformation kicked fucking ass, I thought, and just... Again, it lived up to my expectations a lot. Definitely a lot more than I expected. I know I said that Cerebral Rot was the only 20 buck spin release that really grabbed me. I lied. By accident, though. I forgot all about this. Superstition, the anatomy of unholy transformation. Fuck yes. If you're a fan of, like, more old-school death metal, this is definitely for you. Like, it's not, like, full of, like, guttural vocals or anything like that. It's more of, like, kind of... Like, a, a more, like, black metal-y style of vocals, but not really. It's kind of hard to put your finger on, but this is just some ripping death metal in the style of the ancients. I highly recommend getting into Superstition from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Fuck yes. All right, top three records of 2019 right here. We have number three. Drum roll, please. Disgorge from Psychotic Depths by Mortiferum on Profound Lore and Parasitic Records. Parasitic just put out the cassette. Holy fuck. Now, you want to talk about the best drum sound of 2019? Right here, ladies and gentlemen, the drums on this record are so fucking well done. I, I love this release so fucking much. All six tracks are amazing. I just wish the interlude was a little bit longer. The instrumental, like, acoustic track is... It's so fucking good, it's worth buying this alone for. And again, just a great promo photo. Amazing artwork. Which was all actually done by uh, Chase Slacker. Ch Chase Slaker, Slacker, I'm sorry, but Chase does guitars and whatnot. And he also painted this beast. Look at that. It's a ramen noodle fucking nightmare. Discord from Psychotic Depths is the way Death Doom Metal was meant to fucking sound. You can tell Mortiferum were hanging out with Spectral Voice. They toured with them a couple times before recording this. Because as much as I love Altar of Decay, a lot of those elements felt to be either gone or they just amped them up so much because this is just so fucking good. From start to finish, I can't get over like... Inhuman Effigy. It's just one of those songs that so fucking sick. And Discord from Psychotic Depths is just one of those releases again. It doesn't get old. The more you listen to it, the more atmosphere you hear, the more just cool drum fills you hear, the more vocal patterns you understand. It's just fucking sick. And Amazing, amazing guitar work from Max Bowman. Just... Bravo fucking... Like, seriously, bravo. This is such a killer release, though. Arachnic, Vision of Despair, Inhuman Effigy, Putrid Ascension, Funeral Hallucinations, Interlude, Faceless Apparition, Fucking A. This right here is the way Death Doom was meant to fucking sound. Heavy, sinister, and at the same time, filled with atmosphere. And this is on some kind of blue bone splatter, whatever, sick. Just like electric blue bone splatter. Badass stuff. 
but what's really badass are the fucking tunes that exist within these grooves. Mortifarum, Discords from Psychotic Depths, Killer Death Doom Metal from the Pacific Northwest. So fucking good. Like, if you're a fan of, like, Ripa Kalu, yo, you really need to listen to this. Like, pretty much if you're a fan of Abhorrent, Ripa Kalu, Morbid Angel, Demigod, Spectral Voice, Innumerable Innumerable, innumerable forms. Yeah. Get into Mortifarum. Disgorge from Psychotic Depths. So fucking good. This was kind of what I was expecting the new Fetid to sound like, but the drums were a little too high in the mix. And same thing with the vocals. And they also changed the guitar tone on a lot. But here, this is fucking pretty much death metal perfection. Disgorge from Psychotic Depths by Olympia Washington's Mortiferum on Profound Lore and Parasitic Records. Just look at that cover art. I, I can't get over how good the artwork is. It's so fucking perfect. For what this record sounds like, like it legit looks like it was recorded it, it sounds like it was recorded inside this cave of ramen noodles. It's amazing. Again, if you're a fan of Death Doom Metal, no excuse here. You're going to love Mortiferum's Disgorge from Psychotic Depths. So fucking sick. And we have two releases left. And I'm very excited to go over these two with you. Number two is one of the most savage releases in death metal in the past ten years. Probably right next to their debut full length, Suicide Euphoria. Talking about posthumous humiliation by Pissgrave. Profound Lore Records and Night Shroud Records. I just ordered the cassette version from Extremely Rotten. Fuck yes. Posthumous Humiliation by Philadelphia's Filthiest Pissgrave. Holy fucking shit. Imagine if Black Witchery gave a shit about death metal. That's pretty much what this sounds like. So fucking good. Every song on here is just a punch to the fucking face. So goddamn good. Like, especially like Rusted Wind. Yo, Rusted Wind is such a good song. Like, again, that's worth the price of admission alone. But like, every track on here fucking. Mechanical of Ripping Flesh, Funeral Inversion, Catacombs of Putrid Chambers, Into the Deceased. Fuck yes. That's what I felt like after listening to this for the first fucking time. Disgusting artwork and whatnot. I love their choices. And I love the fact that they did this on Heavy Duty, Plain Black Wax. And people were legit waiting for the color LPs to drop to where they actually missed the first pressing of Posthumous Humiliation because they were just assuming that this was coming out on colored vinyl, which it wasn't. Suicide Euphoria didn't come out on colored wax either. So it was kind of a bummer for some of you out there probably because I know I helped some people find copies of this. Because Dark Descent had some. I think 20 Bucks Spin had some. And a couple other people had some. But this was one of those releases that when, it, when the LP first dropped, it sold the fuck out. Like, the day of the actual, 
like, um, I forget what it was. It might have been the day of the actual release was when people must have realized, oh shit, this isn't coming out on colored vinyl. I better get black because I remember like getting this in the mail and people just being like, yo, how the fuck did you get a copy of that? Blah, blah, blah. And just being like, I pre-ordered it. Like the day it went up because I figured it would have been sold out by now. Like, I was wrong. But if you're a fan of like war metal, throw war metal together in a blender with fucking early deicide and whatnot and just holy fucking shit so goddamn gnarly if you don't get it i don't know what to tell you then you don't like black death metal you don't like war metal then because that's where these influences are being drawn from alongside like early deicide most of this Sounds a lot like fucking Corifragrium when it comes to some of the riffing. Profane Order. Black Witchery. I can name tons and tons of Black Death War Metal bands that this sounds more like than it does a Death Metal band. But Tim Mellon is the fucking man and I know he's a big Death Metal maniac. And to my ears, this is Death Metal pretty much at its gnarliest and most extreme that's pretty much the same exact thing people said about early carcass. This sounds like a wall of noise. What the fuck are you listening to? Like, when, um, Reek of Putrefaction came out, people did not know what to make of that release because they just looked at it as noisy nonsense. But that's obviously not true. Listen to Symphonies of Sickness. Again, people looked at it as, what the fuck is this noisy filth? Now it's considered a classic. Some stuff takes time. And some stuff, <laughs> drooling, some stuff is not meant for everyone. And this right here, based on the cover art alone, obviously is not meant for everyone. But... If you're a fan of savage fucking death metal that also has elements of black death bestial war metal, look no further than Pissgrave. Like, holy fuck. And speaking of Pissgrave, you know what? I'm gonna throw Suicide Euphoria on real quick. You know what? Let's keep it with 2019 releases. I'm gonna throw on... Uh, Cathonica, Typomantia, Sacred Triarchy of Spiritual Putrefaction before we go over the number one death metal release of 2019, in my opinion. But that was Altar of Gore, Obscure and Obscene Gods, the advanced tape copy. Now, I'm going to make, I'm going to figure it out, and I'm going to make a legit album of the year video, top 20, and it's going to be like that. So, in the meantime, these are just live streams until I figure out how to get all these pictures and stuff that my mom wants onto her new phone, and I can do whatever I want with this phone and pretty much make it the camera and everything and set it all up. But this release right here by Cathonica, I threw it on the death metal list as well. But like this is just essential listen, li like essential listening for 2019, regardless of what you're a fan of. If you're a fan of extreme music, this is pretty much almost as extreme as it gets. Like there's a reason I'm playing this after. Showing off Pissgrave at the number two spot. Trust me, this is fucking sick shit. Especially for all you Incantation fans out there. Because it's a way more chaotic, like, version of Incantation, pretty much. I love this album, and I really, really love the number one spot here. And I know people are gonna say, 
You're being biased. No, I'm not. If I thought this was mediocre, I would legit be like, well, I don't know what the fuck happened, but it was mediocre, I'm bummed, etc. Like I was with the new Tomb Mold record. The new Tomb Mold record did nothing for me after the first track. Seriously, and I'm, I'm sorry for all, like, I'm a Tomb Mold fan. I love the early shit, but that new record, I felt like it should have been an EP, and it was boring. This right here, Blood Incantation, Hidden History of the Human Race on Dark Descent Records and Century Media Europe, is the complete fucking opposite of boring and is the complete follow up to Star Spawn that I wanted and have been dreaming of since 2016 when Star Spawn dropped. Now, there's so much to go over with this record from the cosmetics to the songs themselves. But first off, I'm going to go over the artwork. Bruce Pennington is a science fiction artist. He did the artwork for the Interdimensional Extinction EP, you know, the... He did this. Alongside this as well. That's also a Pennington piece. So... It's awesome hearing the transformation from interdimensional extinction to hidden history of the human race, but at the same time, there's parts on here that still sound like Time Ghoul, there's parts that still sound like Demi-Lick, you even have Anti Bowman coming in on guest vocals on track number three, the instrumental mostly inner paths to outer space. That end guttural is Anti Bowman from Demilick. In case you did not recognize that vocal, I don't know how you couldn't recognize it, but. Hidden History of the Human Race starts off with Slave Species of the Gods. Now, if you've been following Blood Incantation live, they've been playing that song for a couple years now in a live setting. Same thing with Giza Power Plant. So I've heard those two songs a fuckload and had been dying to hear studio versions. So getting to hear 100% analog recorded versions of these songs that I've only heard in a live setting over the past like three plus years, oh my goodness, that alone got me fucking hype. But when I saw them live on the last tour and they actually played to the, oh, I forgot, it's one long song on side two. When they played Awakening from the Dream of Existence to the Multidimensional Nature of Our Reality, Mirror of the Soul, I legit was like, what the fuck? Holy shit. That was it. I knew from that moment that this was going to be something absolutely amazing. Then they dropped the music video for Inner Paths to Outer Space. I had heard the whole entire album at that point live on YouTube, but still not properly. So when I threw this on for the first time, I was just speechless. It was everything I possibly wanted out of Blood Incantation. Seriously, to me, this is beautiful, this is art, and this is death fucking metal for people with an open mind when it comes to death metal. Fuck your hype beast bullshit and fuck your trends. I hate when people are like, 
Blood Incantation fans are like, you know, the supreme kids of death metal. Fuck you. Seriously, you're an idiot if you believe that bullshit, first off. And secondly, not only do they have some of the sickest merch in the game, why would you not want to support a band that not only give a fuck about their fans, are on a badass record label like Dark Descent, got Century Media to make where it says Century Media Europe, it says Century Death. That's awesome. But I feel that Paul, Morris, Isaac, and fucking Jeff just absolutely killed it with Hidden History of the Human Race. Everybody does their part so fucking well. Isaac's drumming on here is some next level shit in its own right. And again, the LP Cosmetics Dark Descent does not fuck around. This is the Galaxy Merge. And it actually looks like a fucking galaxy. Like, it's gorgeous. Look at that. It fucking look. it legit looks like a star or a planet. And the Stargate Research Society presents... Blood Incantation, Hidden History of the Human Race. And play it 33 reincarnations per minute. So fucking sick. Like, seriously. It's all the little details that Blood Incantation added to the cosmetics here that add to an already amazing listen. Like, let me get this bad boy out. But the Pennington artwork, I fucking love it. My homie Casey Hogan took the uh, photo right here. The, the promo pick. Casey used to do vocals for Spectral Voice, and he normally does merch for the boys. So if you ever see Casey, go say hello. He's a good dude. But uh, Paul, Morris, Jeff, and Isaac fucking killed it to contact blood incantation concentrate but let's go over the stargate research society booklet a meditative inquiry on the mystery and nature of human consciousness as revealed by blood incantation you can write to the stargate research society this is very 70s very cultish and just awesome Seriously, fucking awesome. Breathe in, relax your body and mind, let go, be here now. Focus your mind through the center for 60 seconds, keep breathing. Exhale your empty mind as you turn the page. Super, super sick stuff here, like... Is your life based upon a pyramid? There's the Giza power plant. Like, it's fucking awesome. Like I was saying, very, very 70s. Pink Floyd metal-ish. Tangerine Dream. Like, especially on track 4, which is one 18-plus minute monster. I'm pretty sure it's around 18 minutes. I could be wrong, but like... It's insane. It sounds like Tangerine Dream and then it goes into fucking Blood Incantation. Because you want to know what this sounds like? The new Blood Incantation record mostly sounds like... Blood Incantation. And if you read the uh, Album of the Year from Decibel article then you'll realize that that was the fucking plan. They were influenced by Star Spawn and Interdimensional Extinction. And there's parts on here that could have been on Interdimensional Extinction, like where it goes into that kind of time ghoul territory. Because there's not that much of it on Hidden History, especially... There's not even that much on Star Spawn compared to Interdimensional Extinction, but 
I love these fucking photos and stuff. What incantation are time travelers? They are returning you to the cosmos. And it goes over like fucking, uh, like these are pedals and whatnot, and like what type of synthesizers they use. Like I see a Moog MG1, a Roland RE201 with a space echo, an FL9 Ibanez, like really sick shit. You just have to dig in and kind of have a little basic understanding of like, you know, instruments and stuff, but yeah, this is so fucking sick. There's so much stuff here. Cosmic Echoes and Nubior Greetings. And there's like even books and whatnot to, you know, get into if you want to find out more about some of the, you know, lyrical content behind Blood Incantation's lyrics and stuff. It's fucking sick, and I highly recommend, again, looking into some of these, you know, publications. As no death is known, only doorways. You are the Stargate. Larry makes an appearance. And I heard a rumor that there might be a t-shirt being made with the We Are Not Alone, along with the Saturn Rings. Not sure if it's actually happening, but I have my fingers fucking crossed. So, real quick, let me read this. Therefore, Hidden History of the Human Race Side 1 represents the latest in research and the most recent public offering. As with all previously released material, Hidden History was telepathically received in its entirety. Only traditional instrumentation was used as a sound source. The result is a very musical series of sequences containing complex frequency structures which tend to act as triggering mechanisms for altered states of consciousness. Consciousness. So drop some acid and listen to this bad boy. But Hidden History of the Human Race Side 2 was originally released in tape form in 2019. Many and various groups, instructors, and individuals throughout the country who specialize in teaching altered state techniques have acknowledged and accepted hidden history as a very effective part of their ed educational procedure. For the best results, one should cho choose a time when either side one or side two may be played in its entirety without outside interruption. While listening, do not attempt to analyze the music as this is type of mental activity tends to negate any centering action by the Stargate Research Society. So, the Stargate Research Society was formed in 2011 for the purpose of studying the effects of sound frequency structures upon the human organism. Since that time, a growing body of evidence has pointed to the existence of musical structures which strongly affect the organism in beneficial ways. The manner in which these frequency structures are reorganized and presented in musical form their form becomes a caustic agency for human reaction or response. Fuck yes. Blood Incantation, Hidden History of the Human Race on Dark Descent Records and Century Media Europe. And there's more! Here's the actual lyric sheet. We have a uh, nice quote up top and the first song alone has seven guitar solos all named it's fucking sick like decapitated obelisk obelisk is the first guitar solo by Paul Riddell after the first chorus 
I, I, I fucked that up, but, uh, the actual... I don't fucking know. Cross the bridge, divine, from the cosmic mind. If you don't know that Blood Incantation, Hidden History of the Human Race is badass, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Chad Gailey from Necrot took this photo, and they're even using Necrot's drum kit. So this had to have been taken on the uh, Decibel Tour. I need to decipher those hieroglyphics. I have yet to do that yet. But this is such a killer fucking record. I, again, like I said, can't get over how good it is. And Paul, Isaac, Morris, and Jeff just absolutely killed it, I felt like, with Hidden History of the Human Race. The cassette sold out before I get to, got to grab a copy, but hopefully in the near future I can grab this on tape. As I love the way Blood Incantation sounds on cassette because they do record 100% analog, so it sounds fucking great on tape. I love my Star Spawn tape to where I almost listen to it more than my LP version, but I can't get over how good Hidden History of the Human Race is. And I can't wait to hear more of what Blood Incantation has up their sleeves for the future. But we have Spectral Voice now working on new material after this European tour. So get ready, folks. Shit's about to get gloomy. But we were blasting Cathonica, Typomantia. Sacred Triarchy of Spiritual Putrefaction on Caligari Records. Double LPs available on Sentient Ruin Laboratories. Now, I know this video was a fucking mess, but in case you missed it, top three releases Mortiferum Disgorged from Psychotic Depths. On Profound Lore and Parasitic Records. Pissgrave Posthumous Humiliation on Profound Lore and Night Shroud Recordings. Fuck yes. Number one, Blood Incantation, Hidden History of the Human Race. Dark Descent Records and Century Media Europe. And number four was Superstition, The Anatomy of Unholy Transformation. So sick. But, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know this wasn't the best video. It was all over the place. I need to get shit situated with the camera and the memory and all that nonsense. But... We got to blast some sick tunes, I got to go over some sick tunes, and hopefully, you know, you liked my list. It, hey, it's hard. This year was no joke, but I'm going to do a legit top 20 video and get it out to you sickos ASAP. But I hope you had a good holiday. Hopefully I have this video done before New Year's. Fingers crossed. It's all about getting space back on this phone. So, thanks for tuning in. As always, you fucking rule. Hoosh. <laughs>